The hardest, most profitable thing to do in the business world is to get ordinary people to change their behavior. Doing so in a low trust society like Pakistan is harder still. And convincing other people to give you the money to do the hardest of hard things in business, well, you'd have to be slightly insane to at least try that. The team at Kareem, however, have managed largely to pull off all three and done so very successfully. Except, this is not a how they built it story. As fascinating as those are, they have been done to death, including by profit. Instead, this is an analysis using never before seen financial and operational data from Kareem Pakistan's operations to understand what it took for Kareem to induce the change in behavior needed for the business to succeed, including estimates of actual amounts spent and whether that bargain was successful. Ariba Shahid and Farooq Tirmizi report. The first thing that is evident from the data is that Kareem's customers' billings, not the same as its revenues, skyrocketed between 2016 and 2018, but then stalled somewhat in 2019. Part of that is largely due to the fact that we are presenting the data in US dollars. In Pakistani rupees, Kareem's revenue actually grew by 24% to 25.9 billion rupees. But that rupee growth was almost entirely wiped away in US dollars by the depreciation of the rupee against the dollar. And Kareem's CAC does not have an obvious pattern. It starts off high in 2016, declines by almost half in 2017, rises somewhat in 2018, and then suddenly skyrockets again in 2019. So what is happening with this business? When Kareem started out building its network, it faced a chicken and egg problem. It did not have drivers and cars. No riders would want to use the app. But if it did not have riders, no drivers and cars would want to join the app. Each would need each other to make it worth their while, but neither would start unless the other was already there. Kareem solved this problem as every other ride hailing company does by incentivizing the drivers to be available no matter whether or not they had riders. Those incentives did not come cheap. Between 2016 and 2019, Kareem spent a total of 12.5 billion rupees in incentives to drivers, over and above the rupees 43.7 billion they were paid in their share of customer fares over the course of those four years. In 2016, about 29% of the income that captains derive from Kareem was from bonuses and guarantees alone. As the business has grown, the number has declined to about 19% in 2019. Driver incentives form the core of Kareem's customer acquisition cost. Over the past four years for which Profit was able to obtain data, the captains made about 72% of the total amount of money spent by Kareem, a number that has remained remarkably consistent during that time though much more of it now comes in the form of their share of customer fares in the Kareem bonuses and incentives than it used to. By Profit's estimates, Kareem has done a remarkable job in growing its user base. During 2016, its first full year of operations in Pakistan, the company had approximately 118,000 active users according to Profit's estimates, using the company's financial and operational data. By 2020, that number had grown to 3.6 million. This growth, however, has not come at a consistent pace. Then, there has been Kareem's ambitions beyond ride hailing. In 2020, even before the pandemic hit, Kareem's global management, as well as the one in Pakistan, was getting ready to launch their super app, which would begin to offer a wide array of services. While numbers of 2020 are guarded because they won't be pretty given the pandemic, the incentives launched by Kareem in Pakistan, both in the delivery space as well as Kareem Pay, indicate that Kareem is interested in gaining a higher market share of wallet from its core base of 3 million active users, rather than converting more of its 11 million registered users into active ones. It seems like a relatively straightforward proposition. Kareem can continue to leverage its core assets to build a great platform that will allow it to increase revenues with relatively less investment in seeking to gain new users. What could possibly be the downside? None. If executed well enough, becoming a platform for other startups sounds like it may be a great idea, or it may just end up creating confusion for users and detracting them from the core Kareem experience. 
what direction it will take depends entirely on the quality of its technology and product managers. No pressure, folks.